Before we go on to more complicated setups, we are first going to look at the basics and how to apply our left hand and the equation that we just learned in the previous theory section. So let's look at MJ10, P42 on the right side. Hmm, these things can get pretty complicated. But anyway, this looks doable, so let's do this first. A uniform magnetic field has constant flux density that makes things so much easier for now. Just constant. A straight wire fixed length carries a current I. Where is I? They should probably draw this nicer a bit. Okay. I'm so used to colors. At an angle to the to the magnetic field. Wow, now the magnetic field is the one that is kind of tilted. So you have to orient your brain a little bit because we are used to seeing straight magnetic fields but now it's a little tilted. So the current in the wire is changed. Oh changing this but the angle is constant hmm on the figure sketch a graph to show the variation with current where is this uh of force so oh my goodness have to draw a graph ah. okay no problem whenever you see a graph question the first thing is do you know key points is there an equation to help you draw this graph anything that has f and i in it f bill we just learned it f b i l so F, B, I, L, sine, theta. Let's write out the whole thing. Or you could think of it this way. When there's no current flowing through the wire, will there be a force acting on the wire? No. No current, no force. So you know, oh, it should pass through this point. Which means, hmm, when there's large current flowing through the wire, is there a force acting on the wire? Yes, there is. So it's probably going to have to do like that so it's either a straight line or a curved line either one how do we know that's when we look at the equation so when you look at the equation if you can come up with a proportionality relationship like you know force is proportional to something then you can know how to draw the line you want to look at the relationship between f whoops wrong what is the relationship between f and i is b constant yes it is constant because they told us the b is constant is L constant, the length of the wire? Yeah, L is constant. I mean, you're not going to change the length of the wire. Is the angle theta constant? Yes, they just said it right up here. So all these are constants, which means all that's left is just F and I that is changing. So you can say, oh, force is proportional to the current. Magnetic force. So you can think of it as you are varying I, that's your... Uh, independent variable and the force will be your dependent variable. Ah, very nice. Straight line graph, oh, F proportional to I. No square. Ah. Is it I square? No, not I square. Is it square root? No, straight line. So you just draw a nice straight line graph. Two marks. Oh my. First one, if you kind of draw a straight line, they're okay with it. If your st starting point is at the origin, that's also another mark. Two marks for drawing a straight line graph. Can you believe this? Okay, okay, let's continue. So that's step one. Where is step two? I'm lost. Ah, there. Oh, another graph. Double graph must be either a curse or a blessing. Now the angle between the wire is varied. Oh, so now we are changing theta. But now the current is kept constant. Hmm, so a little bit of change. So if we can look, use the same equation again. BIL sine theta. What are we plotting now? F against theta. Oh, so this will be F. And then, there's a theta here. What to do? Okay, like you just draw this whole thing first. B, I, L. Are all those constants? B is constant. Current is fixed. Length is still the same. Okay, so this is all locked in. So the, all that you have left is F proportional to sine theta. How to draw this graph? Ah? If you're not sure, let me ask you. How do you draw this graph? Ah? Y equals to sine x. Miss is like that. Ma. Ding dong diang. Here is 360. Here is 180. And well, this is y against x. And then halfway here is until 90. So that is your sine graph. Sine function generally look like that. One full cycle, 360. So here you are basically drawing a sine graph, but on an axis f against theta. It only goes until 90. Oh. So don't draw too, don't draw the whole thing. 90 only is this first part only. See, I highlight a small thing. So, okay, like, you can kind of try to draw that like this. Pretty big. <laughs> 
So the mask game is quite interesting. There's three marks here. First mark is if your maximum force is when it is 90 degrees. So you see, maximum, wait, F max at 90 degrees or not? Correct. Okay, so this is the first mark, uh, M1. Second one, zero force at zero degree. Yup, is M, uh, M1 also. And the last one, reasonable curve with the force about halfway maximum at 30 degrees. What they mean is, your maximum force is here, right? So you say halfway should be about 30. Wow, so nice. My one is just nice 30. Okay, so somewhere here. It's on roughly, roughly the, this shape. Okay, ready. So this is A1. Three marks for this. Very nice. I like this question. I draw two graph, I get five marks. So how do you understand this graph? And link it with your understanding from the previous theory video. Well, you can see... Like you can actually see where the force is the maximum. So if we draw all the magnetic field like last time, like these flux lines here, uh, B, I can suppose, I can call it that. And remember we, how we look at the different arrangements of a conductor? What if the conductor was just kind of aligned and parallel to the magnetic field? Would there be a force? No. Why? What's the angle here? Angle is zero. So you kind of can label that. Angle is zero, force is zero. No force. Okay, imagine the conductor has, you know, current flowing through it. Lah. Okay, something like this. Connected to wire. Okay, let me where's the wire. Ayah, I draw wire for you. Nah, nah, nah. Connect to wire. Okay, connect power supply. Okay, then what if you have a conductor that is current carrying conductor that is perfectly perpendicular on like this? And let's say the, you know, I don't know, there is a current flowing through it. Something like this. There is there a force? Yes, there is a force. In fact, it is maximum force. Why? Because the angle between uh, the current I, the vector I, and the vector B is 90 degrees. So here, theta, 90. Hmm, okay, force is maximum. Whatever maximum value can be. F equals to BIL. Everything in between, mm, there's going to be at some angle. Like it's neither zero, but it's not the largest anyway. So there'll be some angle here. So you're going to rotate it. You will get this graph if you measure the force as you rotate this thing. That is what this graph is trying to tell you. Lah. Okay. Next part. Now this one is kind of a new thing. Ooh, we will learn more about this in the coming chapters, but why not try it since it's here? We use our current knowledge. Okay, get your brains ready. A uniform magnetic field is which one? Directed at right, angle, right angles. Oh, so this one is our B. Field lines, flux lines, whatever they call it. Uh, into a slice of conducting material. Okay, so the conducting means electrons can flow inside this box. This metal box, whatever it is. Then, you have a direction of movement of electrons flowing into that side. So electrons flowing towards the side enter the material. So like this, pew, go inside. And explain why. Initially, the electrons do not travel in a straight line. See me, it's got force. Yeah, but where's the force? Well, we'll talk about that later. But why does it not move in a straight line? Because if you think of it this way, B is pointing down. Electron is moving this way. Charges, B is up and down. So, got angle between them or not? Got. Nah. Angle. Right? So, there will be some kind of cross product. In fact, the maximum force is happening here and we need to explain that. So, how to explain? Let's write it out. Actually, before we write that out, I want to redraw this diagram for you from the top view. So, it's easier for you to see what is going on. So, first, we have the box. Like that. Let's make it black. Okay. And we have the magnetic field going into the page. So this is Q, oh, sorry. Q, R, P, S. Imagine you're looking from the top of the box. Field going into the page. So you can put all the X's here just to symbolize that it is going into the page. It's an important skill when you come to other questions later. Now, where is the electron coming in? To the mm, electrons or be careful or... Electrons are going in here. 
So even if you use your hand and you try to see got force or not, got force or either the electron will curl down or curl up. Mm, okay, so you can talk about that. How to explain ah? Now I need to explain the equation. So this is what you can say. The force on electron is perpendicular or another word we often use is normal. Normal means perpendicular lah. Normal to what ah? Magnetic field. So you can say this. So there will be a force. Uh, and this force is also perpendicular to the electron's motion. Also known as velocity. Perpendicular to electrons motion. So it's kind of like if you take out your hand, you remember oh, there will be force happening if you have magnetic field perpendicular to sorry, magnetic field perpendicular to current, which is the direction of charges moving, which is perpendicular to force. All three fingers must be perpendicular to each other. And this is what we are saying in the sentence. So it helps once in a while when you look at this. So one mark comes from if you talk about magnetic force is normal, uh, is uh, is due to magnetic field, and you also say the direction normal and perpendicular to electron's motion, also known as velocity. So that is two marks, B one and B one. Explain to which side P S or Q R the electrons tend to move. Oh, now we actually have to draw the force now. Okay, okay, rewind. Trivia question. Look at this diagram on the top right. Where will the electron go? Use your left hand. Give you some moment to stick your hand into the screen right now and see how to adjust. Okay, I zoom in a bit more. Here. Stick your hand into the screen and try to adjust it. What do you think? This way? That way? One warning for you is when you're using your hand, uh, be very careful. Current is defined as what again? Current is actually where a positive charge is moving. Remember, I draw this last lesson. When, I when we say, oh, current is flowing this way, that means positive charges are moving this way. But actually, negative charge, le, rebels, all these pesky rebels, they're actually moving the opposite direction. So you remember to turn your hand around, okay? So just remember, current is pointing here, but electron is moving in the opposite direction. <laughs> so you... First step is you poke your hand on the screen, like literally like put your finger finger gun onto the screen. Then you rotate and point your middle finger. This is the only time you get to point your middle finger. Point your middle finger this way. Current. And then you give your thumbs up. Okay? So write a reminder lah if you are doing this past year. Okay, this is your middle finger which is the direction of a positive charge, but now you're looking at electrons, so remember to reverse it. So that means there will be a force acting on this particle once it enters the electric field, which will be upwards. How to draw upwards force? Like that lah. FB. So this will be the force. This is where the particle is moving, velocity. And FB is upwards. Well, very tricky lah. You remember this thing, ah. be very careful. Ah. This current is the direction of a positive charge carrier. Woo, okay, let's describe this. So it's going to move up towards this surface QR. Okay. So let's describe that. Ah, explain. So we can say, okay, it will move towards QR. But you must also remember to explain why. Oh. Because I use my hand. Hey, excuse me. You cannot say like that. You must use more proper terms. So instead of saying, uh, it moved towards QR because I use my hand. You can say... Because of Fleming's left-hand rule. That is the name of this hand thing. Fleming's left-hand rule. Which basically tells us that you can have a magnetic force this way. Current this way. These are like right angles to each other. But you also have a thumb pointing up. Like this. And this is right angle to that axis as well. So think of it as a box, you know, like this. A 3D cube box. And you have mm, current, force, and magnetic field, which is behind. Can okay, I see? Okay, la, like that. La. It's a 3D imagery. So Fleming left hand rule refer to this 
idea of how FBI is related. Wow, FBI, I like that term. Okay, last question. This one is quite tricky. Oh, I didn't say where the mark come from. Okay, state and explain. QR, one mark, because you mentioned or talk about describe family same who or B is proportional to our uh, sorry B cross I is something something uh, we talk about that also can because you're referring to Fleming's rule so that is A1 and M1